Well, good morning, dear saints. It's good to be with you again. This uh, We are here, this is um, Wednesday of our devotion week, so we are looking at, uh, for today, we will be reading in uh, the New Testament. This is John uh, chapter 19, beginning at verse 23, the continued uh, story of our redemption of Jesus suffering and dying on the cross for your sins and my sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We have a reading from Psalm 22. Many bowls encompass me, strong bowls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. You know, this psalm, the prophetic psalm of Psalm 22, we find Jesus um, uh, saying these, uh, speaking some of these things, these words, uh, and we see this happening Uh, here to him up on the cross. We continue reading now our New Testament reading, which is John chapter 19, uh, beginning at verse 23. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, Behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So so the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, They will look on him whom they have pierced. (coughs) Excuse me. 
After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. To tell us die, it is finished. The work that Jesus came to do for you and for me. Dear saints, every time we see this, we give thanks to God. We, we, we see this in verse 30 that he said, it is finished. You know, our salvation is not contingent. It doesn't hang upon what you and I do and, and um and, and trying to be good and doing, doing good, living a good life so that we can, we can go to heaven. We know that's impossible. Christ came and died on the cross and rose again for you and for, you and for me. And he completed, when he completed this work here on the cross, he said, it is finished. What, what a wonderful thing this is for you and I. So we see some, uh, some things here. If we go back here for a moment, uh, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. We found that in Psalm 22:18. We find uh, that scripture had been fulfilled when it says, "Not one of his bones will be broken." This is, this is we find this in um, Psalm 34:20. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. I believe that's from Zechariah 12.10, and we also see that in Revelation, uh, Revelation 1.7. The one who was pierced and who was slain, we will see him. You and I will see him someday face to face. Isn't that a wonderful thing, dear saints? In the meantime, he comes to us here in his word he nourishes us in his in his holy body and in, in his in his body and blood there in the holy supper where you and I are c- continued in this time we are nourished until the time that we will uh be with him in the great feast um forever and ever in the reign of Christ until that time we know that he is with us Jesus said blessed are those he said this to Thomas, blessed are those who, who have not seen but have believed. Dear saints, we have not seen Christ face to face, but we know uh, that he died for our sins. And, and the scriptures attest to us that, that, that he died for us and he rose again for us. And he loves you and he will never leave you nor forsake sake you. His promises are true. Dear saints... I remind you today of your baptisms in which Christ, Christ put his promises upon you, the promise that he would never leave you nor forsake you, the promise that you are sealed and that you belong to him. So, so I, would, I would encourage you to continue to cling to the promises, knowing those promises, knowing that you belong to Christ, Christ and he will never let you go. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our Savior and Lord, you declared that the work of bringing in a new creation was accomplished by your declaration from the cross that it is finished. Give us eyes to see the signs of the new creation in your ongoing healing of our bodies and souls through your holy sacraments where you continue to come to us as our creator who is bringing in the new creation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, I'll see you again as we will continue the uh, beautiful story of Christ, uh, Christ for us and as we will continue with his resurrection.